We live in a vast, complicated, and beautiful world. All sorts of incredible creatures find ways to make do across plenty of different environments. Some locations are more predisposed to housing creatures we've seen before, stuff that's largely recognizable and doesn't cause existential crises upon first sight. Other spots are more remote and put unique stressors on the organisms that call them home. To adapt, some creatures develop traits that we as humans find very interesting, or strange, or downright distressing. Here's a lovely list of a few of said creatures. It's time for the top 10 real-life scary species that you never knew existed. Coming at number 10, we've got the Paku Fish. I've always had an issue with teeth. Horror movies where dental trauma is first and foremost are truly nightmarish, and stress dreams often involve my teeth either falling out or exploding. Sure, they're good for eating and opening bottles if you're careful, but by and large these bones that are not entirely hidden in your body are kinda creepy, especially when they're put into things that don't usually have them. Sure, some fish have well-developed teeth, often in the form of sharp fangs or other similar structures, but when a fish has teeth like a human, that's a no-go. The Paku fish is known for having a set of teeth that look like they're straight out of your grandpa's denture jar. This gives them a strange, uncanny valley quality that most folks find absolutely abhorrent. Imagine seeing a fish smiling at you as if there was a little bit of human spirit somewhere in there. Despicable. Worse yet, the Paku fish has a horrifying nickname where it's from. In the fishing villages of Papua New Guinea, fishermen know this freak as the ball cutter. I don't think any further explanations required. So folks who wade into the waters where these fish are tend to worry about their bits and pieces. Not a pretty picture, I would imagine. The longer I look at it, the more I hate it. Although, maybe dentists can find a way to make this work for everyone. Actually, on second thought, maybe not. Coming in number 9, we've got the Sarcastic Fringe Head. A very interesting name to say the least, I was surprised to find out about this creature. It's not necessarily known for its ironic speech or contemptuous ways though. I'm not really sure why it's named the way it is. What I do know for sure is that it's absolutely terrifying. This small saltwater fish is aggressively territorial, and if you try to infringe on its space, you're in for a big surprise. Its mouth is able to open incredibly wide, like way wider than anything should be able to open its mouth. Then you see all the way down inside this freaky fish. This can be used to capture prey or fight territorial battles. If two sarcastic fringe heads find themselves in the same place, more often than not they will engage in some enormous open mouth wrestling. They'll press their gaping maws up against each other until one is forced to leave and not come back. Sounds like something that somebody made up, but this is a real behavior of a real creature. Freaky looking, freaky acting, freaky name, this thing is all around wild. Coming at number 8, we've got Atrita Chawana Iselti. I hope I pronounced that right. I would tell you guys this thing's colloquial name, but I don't know if YouTube would let us get away with it. We'll throw a quick picture of it up and see if you can guess what it's named after. Yeah, that's what everyone's thinking. This purple snake-like creature isn't actually a serpent though, nor is it a particular body part. It's a limbless amphibian with rings like an earthworm. Who would have guessed? Being weird is a commitment, and Atrita Chawana Iselti is all about that life. This creature is especially odd, as way back in the 19th century, folks found a couple preserved specimens and assumed that it was long gone. Not so though, as in 2011, more specimens were discovered and it was open for study once more. Imagine coming across one of these things in the wild, I'm not even sure if I'd know how to react. Just seeing a huge purple snaky thing wriggling through the grass. Apparently they eat small fish, worms, and invertebrates and tend to get snagged by large birds, but scientists are also quite confused as to how it functions at all. As of right now, the data on this creature is so limited that folks call it data deficient. Like most similar creatures would have at least one lung, sometimes even two, but this one, no lungs. Its hunting methods are unknown and the land they live on is in danger of being changed thanks to human activity. So enough is altered, it could go totally extinct. Save this creature. Coming in at number seven, we've got the Terrible Claw Lobster. I mean, for it to earn such a name, you'd have to assume it's pretty scary. It's not a rock lobster or a red lobster, nor is it involved in Lobster Fest. It is a terrible claw lobster. And it earns those adjectives for sure. Just look at it. That is indeed a terrible claw. Thankfully, it's pretty small for a lobster and wouldn't be able to cause any sort of harm to a human. That is, unless it mutates in the future thanks to, say, toxins in the water or a Godzilla-style event. But 
That probably won't happen in our lifetime anyways. Discovered back in 2007 near the island of Luzon in the Philippines, this is another creature that we don't know nearly enough about. Researchers have only come across a few of these and all in the same location. It probably uses that wicked weapon to snatch up small fish, and some people think it does clams too. Just don't try to eat it yourself. I know lobster is delicious, especially with a little butter, but I can't imagine putting this spiky, spiny creature anywhere near your mouth is a good call. Coming in at number 6, we've got the red-lipped batfish. The what now? Oh, the red-lipped batfish. No, I, I see it now, for sure. This lipstick-adorned freak of nature can be found in the deeper waters surrounding the Galapagos Islands. It just looks so silly, so grumpy, so full of spite. I love it. Add in some scraggly little beard hairs and you have a truly cartoonish creature. The red-lipped batfish isn't a great swimmer, so it uses its modified fins as quasi-legs to help propel it along the sandy seafloor. However, this slow mobility doesn't hurt it much, as for whatever reason, the thing has no natural predators. So it just chills out at the bottom of the ocean, pouting and waddling about. Sounds like a good life to me. Coming in at number 5, we've got the tongue-eating louse. Louse has enough negative connotations already, but add in tongue eating, you're in for a chilling discovery. This magnificent terror finds its way into the mouth of a fish and essentially takes over for its tongue. Whenever the fish opens its mouth, you're able to see its awful translucent white isopod in place of the organ it's named after. Just horrid. It starts by swimming into a fish's gills and plants itself there until it's fully matured. Once growth is complete, it will crawl into the fish's mouth, grab onto its tongue with powerful legs, and pierce the tongue to drink all the blood from it. Eventually, this causes the tongue to wither away, leaving the louse to take its place. Then it begins a weird, less than symbiotic relationship. This parasite remains in the fish's mouth, drinking blood and stealing food for as long as it can. That's not the end though. The louse will then try to find a way to reproduce while still latched on in there. The poor fish. Coming in at number 4, we've got the Horror Frog. Also known as the Hairy Frog, I'd say the first description is more apt. It does elicit horror. Some even call it the Wolverine Frog, which if we're being honest is a pretty accurate way to describe it. Let's start with the horror. These frogs will break their own bones and use the shards as claws for self-defense. Yep, they pierce their own skin with their broken hand bones and then weaponize them. Holy smokes. Apparently the folks who enjoy the taste of horror frogs will hunt them with particularly long spears and machetes in order to avoid being injured by the sharper bits. Wow. I guess we can discuss the hairy aspect as well, because that is just as interesting and visually upsetting. Males of this species grow vascularized threads of skin during mating season, as it is thought that this allows them to absorb more oxygen through their skin while they take care of their offspring. This frog is always changing, whether that means snapping bones for sharp weapons or growing hideous hairs to keep them at peak performance. It earns its name. Coming in number 3, we've got the purple frog. This is a little more straightforward with its frog naming convention. It is indeed purple, or purple-ish, and they're unquestionably freaky looking. Understandably, purple frogs spend most of their time underground. I'd burrow away from the light if I looked like that too. Jokes aside though, not much was known about these underground frogs before 2003, and these days they're considered endangered. Changing environments and the destruction of certain areas threaten their continued existence. This could change the way they live their lives, spending lots of time burrowing with their odd little pig noses and hardened extremities used like spades. Really and truly, they're just so strange overall. Coming in number two, we've got the Munt Jack. While these deer may look like something out of a fairy tale, they're far from magical. Indeed, the canine teeth protruding from their mouths aren't used to hunt prey or anything, but they are contributing to a dearth of biodiversity. Native to China, these interesting creatures spend a lot of time clearing out underbrush, usually by eating a whole whack load of shoots and leaves. In their own habitat, this is all well and good. However, after being introduced to the UK in the 20th century, they started eating everything, resulting in the decline of other creatures like nightingales. Invasive species, why do you gotta be like that? An especially interesting aspect of this species is that it tends to have a dog-like call, which has led many to calling it the barking deer. Pointy teeth, overeating, and barking like a dog. Huh. And finally at number one, we've got Glaucus atlanticus. 
This creature feels like something out of an old Lovecraftian tale, from its fractal-like body formations to an impressive camouflage ability to its consumption and weaponization of venomous prey. Also known as the Blue Glaucus, it floats its way around the ocean, avoiding predators and consuming dangerous prey like Portuguese man o wars It can use the venom stored in these creatures to ward off predators, and at times, large groups of Blue Glaucuses might float close to shore and sting humans. Ouch. Small but mighty, these roving, scavenging predators like to lay their eggs on the carcasses of their prey, although sometimes they just leave their spiral-shaped eggs to float freely and stick to whatever. Hopefully they don't lay too many. All sorts of freaky things are waiting for you in the lesser known niches of the world. You just gotta go looking for them. So what'd you think of the list? Do you agree with my picks? Have you heard any of these before? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.